Alright, in this video I'm going to do some more U substitution problems, but um, I've had some requests to see some more examples, and um, I'm going to make them a, a little bit trickier than the ones in the other video. Unfortunately, when it comes to integration, you know, this is one of the hard parts is just figuring out what to do a lot of times. So, <clears throat> alright, in this first one we have e raised to the x plus e to the x. And, you know, th the thing that kind of catches my eyes is there's an e to the x in here, and the derivative of e to the x is also e to the x. So, <clears throat> actually the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this using some algebra. I can rewrite this as e to the x times e raised to the e to the x. Because remember, if we have like bases, we add the exponents. <clears throat> so I could combine the stuff on the right back into what I had before um, if I wanted to just write it with a single base of e. And now we're simply going to do the u substitution, let u equal e to the x. du, again, is going to be e to the x dx. So it looks like I'm going to get the e to the x dx, this is all going to get taken care of by my du stuff, because that's what du is equal to, and uh, I'll give away my next problem here. And then I'm still left with e raised to the e to the x, but I can rewrite that as e to the u du. And if you integrate e to the u du, you simply get e to the u plus c. And now we simply replace what u was. It's e raised to the e to the x plus c, and that would be your antiderivative in this case. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm going to kind of grind through these to do as many so that I can do as many as I can here. Um, so here we have cotangent of the natural logarithm of sine x, or cotangent of x times the natural logarithm of sine x. And in this case, you can actually just let u equal the whole natural logarithm of sine x. Because remember, if you take the derivative of a natural logarithm, you get 1 over what's inside. Then you have to use the chain rule. But this is equivalent to having cosine of x over sine of x, which, ta-da, is simply cotangent of x. Okay, And I should have stuck my dx on there as well. So the du term is going to take care of the cotangent x dx, and then u is everything that's left over. So really all I have to do in this problem is integrate simply u du. This is like having x to the first. So I'll get u squared over 2 plus c. And again, all you have to do now is just simply replace what u is equal to. So we'll have ln of sine x all being squared over 2 plus c. Okay, and that would be your final answer in this case. <clears throat> Alright, let's do one that's maybe a little more complicated. I don't know, maybe they're all complicated. Um, it's like anything, when you know how to do it, it's not so bad. If you don't, it's, you know, might as well be the hardest thing on earth. So, alright, in this problem, what we're going to do... So this one's actually a little bit trickier. What I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to make u equal to just 1 minus x squared. So u is equal to 1 minus x squared. And this is one of these problems, you know, I would think if this square root wasn't here, a u substitution would definitely work. Um, when I take the derivative, I would get the x to the first power. I could tweak that a little bit, <clears throat> and everything would work out. Well, unfortunately, the square root is in here, but maybe everything will still work out for us. So if I take the derivative, I'll get negative 2x dx. But I only want to replace an x dx, so I divide both sides by negative 2, and I'll get negative 2 du is equivalent to x dx. <clears throat> so now I need to rewrite my, my problem. So the x dx is going to be replaced with a negative 1 half. I just pull that out front. And then I'll put my du over to the side. Well, 1 minus x squared is just u. Well, I also have a 1 minus x squared under the square root. So now I'm left with this problem, 1 over u minus square root of u. You can actually do another substitution. Um, since we've already used u, I don't want to use that again. So what I'm going to substitute in now is v equals square root of u. 
Okay, so I'm going to replace the square root of u. And to calculate my du term, I'm going to square both sides and get v squared equals u. I'll take the derivative and I'll get that 2v dv is equal to 1 du. So now I'm going to plug all this stuff in. Okay, so my, there's my negative 1 half out front. du again is this 2v dv term. Well, u is equivalent to, it says, v squared minus the square root of u, which is just plain old v. And now notice you've got a v in the top, you've got v squared minus v. I could pull the 2 out front, that would cancel out with the half, simply leaving me with a negative. I could factor a v out of the denominator, and I would have v times v minus 1, but that would cancel out with the v on top. So now, if you factor the v out of the bottom, cancel out the v on top, you'll have 1 over v minus 1. And this is just a natural logarithm problem. Okay, so here's a little reminder of how we got started on everything. We actually let u equal 1 minus x squared. So at this point, you'll just integrate. You'll get 1 over v minus 1. When you integrate that, you get ln of v minus 1 plus c. And now I'm going to replace my v with square root of u minus 1 plus c. But again, the original problem didn't involve u. It involved x's. So here it is down here as a reminder. We said that u was actually equal to 1 minus x squared. So I'll get negative ln of the square root of u. So the square root of 1 minus x squared minus 1 plus c, and that'll be your final answer. So this problem actually involved two substitutions. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, let's do uh, one last one here before we go over our YouTube 10-minute time limit. So here I have x times the cube root of x plus 4. A lot of times if you have radicals floating around, you know, one good thing to think is maybe trig substitution, but if it's not a square root, a lot of times you can get by doing a u substitution and you make u equal to the entire radical. Whoops. So u is going to equal the cube root of x plus 4. Well again to calculate my dx term I'm going to have to kind of break this apart. I'll cube both sides and I'll get u cubed equals x plus 4. I could even rewrite this as u cubed minus 4 equals x and then I'll take the derivative, I'll get 3u squared du is equivalent to dx and now I'm going to plug all this stuff back into my integral <clears throat> so it says x, we actually solved for that is u cubed minus 4 we said that cube root of x plus 4, that's what we called u and we said our dx term is going to actually be equal to 3u squared du and now this is all just a polynomial you could pull the u out, or excuse me the 3 out front you would have u times u squared which is u cubed and then I'm gonna have to distribute that to the u cubed minus 4 term so if I distribute u cubed times u cubed is u to the sixth minus 4 u to the third du hey this is an easy problem now so my 3's out front, I'll get u to the 7th over 7. Um, I'll actually get u to the 4th over 4, which will cancel out with the 4. So I'll just have u to the 4th plus c. And now the last thing I'm going to do is simply plug back in um, what my u was at the very beginning. And again, my u was the cube root of x plus 4. But now that's being raised to the 7th power over 7 minus u to the fourth again u was the cube root of x plus 4 raised now to the fourth power plus c and that'll be your final answer in this case all right <clears throat> so again um, some definitely some more complicated uh, u substitution problems so if these are a little too hairy take a look at my 
uh, other video involving use substitution, um, a little more straightforward, might be easier to get your head around before you try these.